All right, so uh, good evening. Let's go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, this is the uh, amateur radio licensing class for uh, technician level, which is the uh, beginning uh, license in the United States. Uh, we work uh, out of this book from the American Radio Relay League, uh, the ARRL Ham Radio License Manual, fourth edition. Uh, and if you look at the bottom, it says for technician, uh, right in there someplace. Um, so this is the book uh, that has the current uh, question pool, uh, and uh, so if somebody is following along on YouTube, welcome, glad to have you aboard. Uh, and this is uh, what we're basing the course on is this book. So when we say we're on chapter two, we're in chapter two of this book. That's what we're talking about. So I'm Gary, W4EEY, or as we would say in phonetics, Whiskey 4, Echo, Echo, Yankee. And uh, tonight we're going to be uh, talking about uh, radio signals and uh, fundamentals. Uh, and we're going to talk uh, a little bit about some uh, mathematics, some metrics, uh, some conversions. Americans, we don't get along with the metric system too well. Um, but it was kind of funny, I'm uh, talking to my friend Matt back here. Matt is from Germany. Uh, he's having a hard time with the English <laughs> measurement system. Uh, in feet and pounds and inches and all of that. So uh, I guess, you know, when you're in a new culture, uh, difficult uh, things come up. Are there any questions uh, about anything that we've covered so far? Uh, if so, go ahead and unmute yourself and just uh, sing out. I don't see any hands or anything. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. We'll run for about an hour tonight. Uh, we will not be taking a break uh, in the middle because we're going to try to get it all done here in, in one go. So great to have you along. Let's go over to the PowerPoint if we could. And uh, here we are on uh, Chapter 2. Nice little graphic there. Radio signals and waves. And here we start right off with the old metric system. Uh, the difference uh, in here in the United States, we're still using the English system of measures. So we have inches, feet, pounds, ounces, gallons, and miles. Well, in the metric system, there's centimeters, meters, kilograms, grams, liters, and kilometers. Um, the problem is in the English system, there's no consistency between the units. That's uh, really difficult to do conversions. Um, and so um, science uh, in... Uh, chemistry and other uh, physics, etc., all standardize on the metric system. In fact, in French, it's the Système International de Uni, uh, the International Systems of Units, and it's used in science uh, for all uh, measurements. Um, so where we would have in the United States a yardstick, in the metric system they have a meter stick. So we're going to be talking more about the metric system right now. And if you go to page 2-2 in your book, you'll find a very similar diagram to this. Uh, and it's, here's a complete listing of um, the various prefixes uh, that uh, is, are used in the metric system, um, how they relate to the base unit uh, by powers of 10. Uh, and uh, if you uh, want to deal with a lot of decimal uh, places, uh, there's also um, at the very right-hand side, the, the multiplier. Um, I think there's 16 different prefixes here on the chart. We're not going to be using all 16. We're going to be talking about eight of them tonight. Um, and the first three are those that are greater than one or greater than a, a base unit. And the prefixes can be attached to anything as a, as a base unit. So you could attach it to a volt in electronics, or you could attach it to an ampere, um, or you could attach it to a meter if you're measuring distance. Um, so these are the prefixes that talk about whatever the base unit is. And so kilo is probably the easiest one. Kilo means 1,000. So if you have a kilometer, also pronounced kilometer, um, well, that's 1,000 meters. That's 1,000 of those meter sticks. Uh, that we saw at the beginning. Mega is a prefix that means one million. So if you had a megameter, well, that's a million meter, a million of those meter sticks. And giga is one billion. So these are the prefixes that we're concerned about 
uh, for the test and for uh, ham radio primarily. Uh, these are the, the ones that are greater than one. And then there are these that are less than one for units that are less than one. Centa is one one hundredth. So if you hear somebody talking about centimeters, that's uh, a hundredth of a meter, a one hundredth of a, that meter stick, for example. Milla is one one thousandth. Micro is one one millionth. Nano is one times ten to the minus ninth. And pico, or sometimes called pico, uh, is one times ten to the minus twelfth power. Um, and so in science, when we're talking about very great magnitudes or very small magnitudes, uh, we tend to fall back on powers of 10. Um, Matt, come on back to me just for a second. I, I got to say that I am so proud of all of you Medics class in decades. <laughs> um, it's, I know we're going to be covering stuff that is kind of challenging and, and kind of, you know, headache inducing, uh, but just hang in there. You will get it. Uh, it, it will come clear to you, uh, but I'm, I'm so proud of, uh, of all of you for, for you know, trying this and, and sticking it out, and we're going to do our best to, to get you uh, the information you need. So some people like to look at uh, the various uh, units on a sideways chart. Sometimes this um, um, makes more of an impression. Um, so let me turn on my laser pointer here. So you here you see 10 to the 0. This is where the base unit is. So it could be the meter, it could be a gram. Um, and going up, here's kilo, that's a thousand. Mega, that's a million. Giga, that's 10 to the ninth. And tetra, which we're not going to be talking about, that's uh, uh, 10 to the 12th. Um, here's deca, 10 to the minus first. Centa, minus 2. Uh, and so on. So you can see how the various prefixes apply uh, to the various ampli uh, the um, uh, amount of the, the size of the unit. Now, this is from a YouTube video, and this is the YouTube video I sent uh, many of you an email about. Uh, that's a, a about six seven minutes long and uh, talks about metric system and conversion. Uh, there are a bunch other. Um, um, videos on, on YouTube. So if you just search on metric prefixes and conversions, you'll come up with a bunch of them. But this is this is a good one. I, I, I like this one. So the metric system, we're going to be doing some practice problems. We'll be working those together tonight. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get uh, some breakthroughs tonight. So let's move on a little bit because the whole purpose of uh, being an amateur radio operator is to make radio frequency waves. And I always like this picture because I think it's very calming and soothing and also um, kind of illustrates here's a, a flat pond of water and maybe we've thrown a pebble out into the center of the pond and the uh, pebble by its passage into the water has excited the water and it's generating waves flowing out from a central point. And this is very analogous to the waves that are emitted from a radio frequency antenna. Um, so uh, keep this in mind. And if you were to look at the uh, cross-section view or a side view of those waves, they might look something like this. So we have here a graph of amplitude going positive and then going negative, and we have on the horizontal axis time. So, and because this is so symmetric here, this is what we call a sine wave. Very fundamental uh, in electronics. And here's a relative depiction of some uh, signals. Um, Stuart, you unmuted. Did you have a question? No, I didn't. Sorry. Okay, very good. Um, so here's a, a representation of three sine wave signals, and you can see that we're talking about how often do the peaks occur. This is a low frequency signal relative to this one. This one has more cycles in the same time period, so this is 
in this case a medium frequency, and this has even more cycles in the same time, so this would be a higher frequency. So of these three signals, this is a low frequency, this is a medium frequency, and this is a high frequency. Just giving you an illustration of the concept of frequency. And the time it takes for a radio wave to complete one cycle is interesting. Um, if you have an antenna, here's our antenna off at the left, and it's emitting radio waves, if you measure from the same point on the wave to the next same point, that takes a, a period of time. This is time that we're, we're measuring down here. And since we know that radio waves move at the speed of light, we can calculate how far um, or what this distance is uh, for one complete cycle of the radio frequency signal. And that is known as the wavelength. So we've talked about frequency, and now we're introducing the concept of wavelength. And generally, we measure wavelength not in feet or not in inches. We measure them in meters. So uh, frequency uh, in cycles per second or another um, uh, unit called hertz. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and the wavelength is measured in meters. And here's a fundamental concept that won't mean anything to you just yet. But frequency is where you tune your radio. Most radios have uh, dials or indicators that tell you the frequency of a signal. Why then would we want to know, know about wavelength? Well, wavelength is important because that tells you how big you need to build your antenna to uh, properly emit that radio wave. So frequency is where you tune your radio and wavelength uh, has to do with how big you build your antenna. And uh, the amateur radio um, bands in the United States are depicted on, uh, Matt if you would come back to me just for a second, uh, this, I call this the color chart, um, but the American Radio Relay League calls it the U.S. Amateur Radio Bands chart. Um, and uh, you can find these at ham fests or in ham radio stores. Um, and um, it tells you all of the bands um, and uh, where um, technician class operators can operate, where general class operators have frequency privileges, and where amateur extra class operators uh, can operate. And also the modes with the, the voice portions and the, and the Morse code portions uh, of the bands. Um, a version of this chart is in your book, but if you would like one of these standalone color charts, and I recommend them highly uh, as an operating aid in your ham shack, you are going to be building a ham shack eventually, of course. Just uh, if you would send me an email with your address, uh, send an email to w4eey at arrl.net. Uh, and with your address, I will send you one of these color charts. If we were physically in the classroom, I might be handing them out right now. But uh, anyway, it's always nice to have one of these. So again, if you want to get one of these um, U.S. Amateur Radio Bands chart from the ARRL, uh, just send me an email at w4eey at arrl.net, and I'll be happy to put one of these in the mail to you. But if you can't wait... Go, going back to the PowerPoint, here is a URL at the American Radio Relay League uh, site where you can actually download PDF versions of this very same chart. Um, and you'll see that the, the chart has the frequencies that we can operate. It also has the name of the bands that we operate on, and we identify those by the approximate wavelength. So we have the 160 meter band, we have the 80 meter band, the 40 meter band, the 20 meter band. Remember, that's the distance that a radio wave will travel to completing one complete cycle. Uh, so that's how um, the bands are organized by wavelength and then specifically by frequency. And I got to grab the right mouse. All right. So we've talked a little bit about frequency, and that also is known as cycles per second. It's how often a, a radio wave, a sine wave, repeats in one second. So 
if you're listening to uh, FM radio and you're listening to a station at uh, 102.5, that radio wave is actually going up and down, up and down, up and down 102 million times each second. That's in the FM band here in the United States. So um, cycles per second. And then we use the metric prefixes. So if you had 1,000 cycles per second, that's the same as one kilo cycle per second, or one kc. 1,000 kc, jumping up again, is the same as one mega cycle per second, or here written out one million cycles per second. Well, we don't call it cycles per second anymore. Back in the 1970s, we decided uh, around the world that we were going to honor this gentleman, uh, Heinrich Hertz, uh, a German physicist. And so we were going to change the name that we would call frequency from cycles per second to Hertz. And uh, if you're an antique person, if you like to go out and look for antiques, especially antique radios, take a look and you'll see on this old time Zenith radio, they were talking about the frequencies in kilocycles and megacycles. Whereas a, a newer radio, they're going to have megahertz and kilohertz. So that gives you an idea. Um, if it's a really old radio, it's going to have the, the KC or the, the megacycles per second. The radio frequency bands are kind of like the spectrum. Uh, in fact, we call it the radio spectrum. Uh, but uh, when we talk about spectrum, we kind of think of the visual spectrum from reds to uh, ultraviolets. Uh, and so they've kind of imposed uh, um, this rainbow here, but really visible light is a part of the radio spectrum. And visible light is way up here uh, where I'm moving um, my laser pointer. And we have various bands of frequencies from very low frequency, low frequency, medium frequency, high frequency, very high frequency, ultra high frequency, super high frequency. There's a lot going on here and when you get all of the radio users in the United States charted on one chart, holy smokes, the radio spectrum is packed. And you can get, this is a wall chart uh, that you can uh, actually purchase and it looks kind of cool on the wall. And you'll see in this the designated amateur radio bands in the various allocations that are the same as on the ARRL color chart. So the frequency bands in general, here's a, a chart that uh, talks about them as we looked at the spectrum display before. The ones that you're going to want to be concerned with primarily are the high frequency band, which is from 3 to 30 megahertz. The AM broadcast band in the United States is below this, uh, from about 0.5 to 1.6 megahertz is the AM broadcast band. So that's known as a medium frequency. But we in amateur radio primarily operate in HF from 3 to 30, in VHF from 30 to 300, and UHF from 300 to 3000 megahertz. So these three bands right here, HF, VHF, and UHF, are the ones that you're going to primarily be interested in uh, for the amateur radio exam. We're talking about antiques. Uh, some old radios, um, when they were still working out, are we going to use frequency or wavelength, still have the wavelength bands on the dial of the radio. So uh, another indicator. And remember, we talked about wavelength as being the distance the radio wave will travel uh, in one cycle of the radio wave. So how is frequency and wavelength, you know, what's the relationship? Well, the relationship between them uh, can be explained in this pyramid. Um, and what we're talking about when we're talking about speed, we're talking about the speed of light. Can anybody tell me what the speed of light is? Go ahead and unmute and just uh, answer me. 
186,000 miles per second. Right, that is correct. That is a correct answer in the English measurement system. Anybody know what it is in the metric system? 300 million meters right. per second? 300 million meters per second. So that's what's going up here in the speed. And then we have down here frequency and we have down here wavelength. And wavelength is always measured in meters, we know that. Speed, if we express 300 million meters per second as 300, then we can express the frequency down here in megahertz. Million and million. So this kind of translates out to this. You can always, if you know the wavelength of a signal in meters, you can find the frequency in megahertz by taking 300 and divide it by the, the wavelength in meters. Conversely, if you want to find the wavelength, you take 300 and you divide it by the frequency in megahertz. Frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. So if you have a low frequency signal, let's say in the 160 meter band, well, there's the wavelength, 160 meters. You saw that meter stick. Well, think about stacking 160 of them end on end, and that's a really wide radio um, wavelength. Whereas if the frequency is 28 megahertz, the wavelength is approximately 10 meters long. So the lower the frequency, the larger the wavelength, the larger the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. They're inversely proportional. All right, I'm going to teach you a basic skill here. This is the proper way to write megahertz. <laughs> it's kind of silly, but okay. So you, you want to have a capital M, a capital H, and a small z. Believe it or not, this is a test question. So you, you want to pay attention to that. All right, this is going to be our challenge for tonight. The calculators um, are uh, available to be used. Um, Matt, if you would open up the Zoom audio, please. And we're going to do some practice problems together. Uh, so um, let's see. How many milliampheres is 7.0 amps? So this is a conversion problem. We're trying to convert amps to milliamps. 7,000. All right, I heard 7,000. Does anybody know how we got that? Because we're making the conversion to a, a unit that's smaller. So yes, the answer is 7,000. All right. Yeah, milli is 10 to the negative 3, so you've got to multiply it by 1,000. Correct. Exactly right. All right, so how many kilohertz is an RF signal of 3,500,000 hertz? Uh, 3,500? Right. So since we, we're going to go over three places, so it's kilo, and we'll get rid of these zeros, and so, yes, the correct answer is 3,500 kilohertz. And my professors in uh, school always said, if you don't put the unit on the end, you didn't get the right answer. So, yep. All right. How many volts are equal to 3 kV? 3,000. 3,000 is absolutely correct. So we're doing conversions here. Um, using the, the different metric prefixes. All right, let's continue. How many volts are equal to 5 microvolts? Five thousandths of a volt? No. Micro, um, that would be a millivolt, but micro means 10 to the minus sixth. So millionth? Correct. Five so it would be five one millionths of a volt, or if you wrote it out in, in decimal, it would be that. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. All right. So what is the equivalent of 1,000 millivolts? 
how many volts? One volt. One volt is equal to 1,000 millivolts. You guys are doing great. All right, we have an ammeter that measures 5,000 milliampheres. How many amps is this? Five amps. Five amps it is, absolutely. All right, a frequency readout shows 7.150, oops, yeah. A frequency readout shows 7150 megahertz. What would this be in kilohertz? Seven million one hundred fifty thousand kilohertz. No, that would no. be correct if the answer was hertz. But we're looking for kilohertz, so we're going from no. megahertz to kilohertz. Seventy-one. No. no Seven thousand one hundred fifty kilohertz. Correct. We, um, you'll notice that the units all go by a factor of 10 to the third. So we've got to move over three decimal places. And the answer would be 7,150 kilohertz. That's the same as 7.15 megahertz. We're just doing some conversions. But this is, these are also our, our, our practice to, for the test. So how many microfarads are five million picofarads. Microfarads is a millionth of a farad. A picofarad is a millionth of a millionth of a farad. Just be five, right? The answer in this case is in fact five. Five million picofarads is equivalent to five microfarads, indeed. Um, so you may just have to do some practice on this um, to get comfortable with it. All right, 21,500 kilohertz, what is that in megahertz? Twenty-one point five. Megahertz. 21.5, and great, I mean, you put the unit in, that's good. 21.5 megahertz. All right, and we have a frequency readout that says 5,125 megahertz. What is this in gigahertz? 5,000. Not 5,000, it's already 5,000. It's 5.125. Perfect. Exactly right. 5.125 gigahertz. These are the same. They're just expressing them with different units at the end. So 5,125 megahertz is the same as 5.125 gigahertz. You've been doing really well. So now what I want to do are some frequency and wavelength problems. And we're going to be using uh, this uh, chart uh, that we talked about uh, before. I put the 300 up here, uh, and I put uh, megahertz down here to remind us and the wavelength in meters. So what I have to do now, though, Matt, if you would uh, yeah, put a, up a camera for the moment, I have to get out of PowerPoint here. Come on, go down. And I have to change my display settings. Don't look behind the curtain here. Okay, come on, go down. All right, I gotta go from extend to duplicate. Keep changes. Oop. What happened here? PowerPoint came back. All right. All right, here we go. Matt, you can go back to the, uh, thank you. I gotta get my cheat sheet over here. So here, we're gonna do these together. And the question uh, we're asking, um, we on a frequency of 7.15 megahertz, um, and we want to know um, what the wavelength is.
Oh, see, it didn't. It didn't duplicate. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulty here. Hang on. Ah, see. Mm -hmm. All right. Stand by. I'm trying to get these to duplicate. All right. Let's see if it stays. <laughs> There we go. So I've got a calculator over here, and I've got uh, our uh, pyramid over here. So again, what we're trying to find is the wavelength, and we know the frequency is 7.15 megahertz. So what do I do? You divide 300 by the 7.125. It's already in megahertz. All right, let's try that. So here's 300 divided by 7.150 is what I said. That's what I meant to say anyway. Um, and so I know that 7.150 is in the middle of the 40 meter band. So I expect an answer to be around 40 meters. Oh, look at that. 41.95. So this tells you um, what it, this is the exact wavelength of that particular frequency. Um, and it's a close to the 40 meters, so it's in the 40 meter band. We use the approximation uh, to, for the band names. Um, so um, this is one way if you have a frequency and they ask you what band is this in and you forget, you don't have to memorize it. You can actually do the calculation and say, oh, okay, I can figure out what, uh, what band that's in by doing this. So uh, let's go on here. All right, we know the wavelength is 80 meters. What is the frequency? What do we do? We know the wavelength of the signal is 80 meters. We want to find out what frequency that corresponds to. And what we do is we use um, this pyramid. What you do is if you're trying to find frequency, which is what we're trying to find, you put your thumb over the frequency. I can't do it here <laughs> visually. And so you're left with 300 over wavelength. This is to cue you to say 300 divided by the wavelength. So 300 divided by, and I said 80. Let's see what frequency this is. 3.75 what unit? Megahertz. Megahertz, exactly. Right, okay, good. All right, let's carry on. So, we know, we said there the wavelength was 80 meters. Now we're going to say the wavelength is 75 meters. What do we do? 300 over 75. 300 divided by 75 equals 4, 4 megahertz. megahertz. And so, um, in fact, if you look at the, uh, the uh, color chart from the ARRL um, in the book or when you get uh, yours in the mail, uh, if you look at the 80 meter band, they call it the 80 meter band, and you'll see that it goes all the way up to 4 megahertz. The, Voice uh, or single sideband section is the high end of the band, and many people call that the 75 meter band. So you may hear Hams talking about, I was operating on the 75 meter band, and you're going to look on the chart and go, there is no 75 meter band. Well, 80 meters is such a wide band that it actually constitutes the 75 meter band and the 80 meter band. But on the chart, they just call it 80 meters. So just wanted to explain that to you. All right, last question. Let me clear out uh, the calculator here. Clear out that. All right, we have a frequency of 28,300 kilohertz. What's the wavelength? What do I do? 28,300 kilohertz. Convert it to megahertz first. Okay, so 28,300 kilohertz is? Uh, 28.3 megahertz. Right, excellent. So we'll take 300 and divide it by 
28.3, and we'll find out that the wavelength is around 10 meters, and in fact this frequency is in the amateur radio 10 meter band. Excellent, excellent job. So those were the practice problems. Um, so I'm gonna change my display settings back again here, if my computer will cooperate. Keep those changes. I'm going to go back here. We're going to go from the current slide. All right. What we're going to do now are our first real questions. These are questions that you will actually see on the test. Uh, and the answers are the same answers that you will see on the test. Just that the answers may be in a different order then you see them here. So don't memorize answer A or answer B because that'll only get into trouble later. All right, let's try. What is the name for the distance a radio wave travels during one complete cycle? Radio wave. wave. That is the wavelength, absolutely correct. And how fast does a radio wave travel through free space? Speed of light. The speed of light, which in um, the metric system is how much? 300, 300 million meters. 300 million meters per million second. Meters, yes, that's, right. that's right. Yeah, okay, good. How does the wavelength of a radio wave relate to its frequency? The longer the wave, the shorter, I mean. Look at the answers uh, here. Shorter, Find the right the short, answer. The shorter the wave uh, I get next to it. I'm sorry. The long... I, I think you've got it. Yeah, I'm just trying to get it out. The, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It, it, the relationship is the longer the wave, the, the shorter the distance or something like that. <laughs> okay. okay, now we... So we're looking at the difference between wavelength and frequency. Remember, they're inversely proportional. And so we got to find out uh, something uh, uh, that is inversely proportional here out of these answers. That's right. The, the, the... So let's read them. The wavelength gets longer as the frequency increases. Is that correct? No. No. It's shorter. All right, it's the shorter. wavelength gets shorter as the frequency increases. Well, that sounds, that sounds inversely proportional. There is no relationship? No, there is. It's inversely. Uh, and the wavelength depends on the bandwidth of the signal. No, that's not. So it's got to be this one right here. It's got to be B. So what is the formula for converting frequency to approximate wavelength in meters? Three hundred divided by frequency. Yeah, three hundred divided by. So that's answer which? E. D. D is in dog. Absolutely correct. Wavelength in meters equals three hundred divided by the frequency in megahertz. Mm -hmm. So what property of radio waves is often used to identify the different frequency bands? Approximate wavelength. We talked about the 80 meter band, the 40 meter band, the 20 meter bands. It's the approximate wavelength. See? <laughs> no. <laughs> the time it takes for waves a. to travel it's one a. mile? Yeah. No, it's A. <laughs> yeah. All right. What are the frequency limits of the VHF spectrum? And I threw them at you pretty quickly. Uh, the HF spectrum is 3 to 30 megahertz. 300, it's D. D. VHF. D. 30 to 300. All right. Megahertz. No. Okay. So, but yeah, yeah, we got to note here that they have different units. So make sure you get the one with the right units. So VHF. For example, the two meter band is about 144 megahertz. That's a VHF signal, so it's got to fit in there. So this is the one. B is the VHF spectrum from 30 
to 300 megahertz. All right, what are the frequency limits of the UHF spectrum? UHF yeah, is ultra high frequency. I heard D, do we agree? Yeah. Why wouldn't it be C? C because it's 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 megahertz, not kilohertz. Ah, yeah, see, good, right, so correct. The answer is in fact D, 300 to 3000 megahertz for UHF. And my favorite, what is the frequency range? What is the frequency <laughs> that, range is referred to that's HF? C. That's 3 to 30 megahertz. This is where you can get long distance right. radio communications. Absolutely. All right. And what is the approximate velocity of a radio wave as it travels through free space? B. B. D. All right. So I heard B, B, and then I heard D. All right. Remember, we talked about that early on. What is the speed of light? It's 186,000 miles per second. 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 This is saying 186,000 miles per hour. hour. No, not the same. We <laughs> already know it's 300 million meters per second. That's the speed of light. And that's what we use because we're in the metric system. So what term describes the number of times per second that an alternating circuit or current reverses direction? How many times it alternates frequency. in one second? Frequency. That's the frequency, correct. Remember, it used to all be called cycles per second. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Get your thinking caps on. Here are our conversions. How many milliampheres is 1.5 amperes? C. Every, C. The milliampheres are a small unit, so yes, indeed, 1,500 milliampheres is equivalent to 1.5 amperes. <laughs> We're doing conversions. All right, what is another way to specify a radio signal frequency of 1,500,000 hertz? C. E. Did I hear, what did I hear? Did I hear a D or a B? B. All right, now let's think about this. This is hertz. B. And this is megahertz. B. It's a B, A. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying kilohertz. to, yeah. You're moving over B. by power of five three, megahertz. Yeah. So you get, yeah, so. 1,500 kilohertz is the same as 1,500,000 hertz. You're doing fine. You know, your brain is going to explode, but you will get this. It'll, it'll come clear. Yeah. How many volts <laughs> are equal to one kilovolt? Can't see it. So the answers are one one thousandth of a volt, 100 volts, 1,000 volts or 1 million volts? 1 1,000 volt. It's not, it's not 1 1,000th. No, it's 1,000. So 1 kilovolt is equal to yep. 1,000 yep. volts. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. All right. How many volts are equal to 1 microvolt? Can everybody see these slides okay? Yeah. Yep. If, you, yeah. if you can't, uh, you, if you may be in the gallery view. If you want to go to speaker view, which is, can be selected in the upper right-hand corner, uh, then it makes the picture a little bit bigger. So the question is, how many volts are equal to one microvolt? And the answers are one one millionth of a volt, one million volts, one thousand kilovolts, or one one thousandth of a volt. So is it one microvolt is... One one thousandth of a volt. No, that would yeah. be a, that would be a millivolt. <laughs> one okay. microvolt. Micro means a millionth. It's a ten to the a. minus six. So the answer a. Is, is a indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. Which of the following is equivalent to five hundred milliwatts? B. B. Forty-five watts. I heard B. 
0.5 watts, and that is the correct answer. 1,000 milliwatts would be the same as one watt. 500 milliwatts is half of that, or 0 0.5. If an ammeter calibrated in amperes is used to measure a 3,000 milliampere current, what reading would it show? What is the equivalent value? A milliampere is a little tiny mm. unit, but you got 3,000 of them. A? C, three, uh, three amperes of C. So indeed, 3,000 milliampheres is the same as 3 amperes. Good. If a frequency readout calibrated in megahertz shows a reading of 3.525 megahertz, what would it show if it were calibrated in kilohertz? 35.25. Uh, check again. A. No, not A. <laughs> what we, we, we want to do is you move over C. 3, and so it's going to end up being 3,525 kilohertz. is the mm -hmm. same as 3.525 megahertz. How many microfarads are 1 million picofarads? B. Microfarads and picofarads, picofarads are also known as micro-micro, if that makes any difference. So if you get a million of them, that's going to be the same as one microfarad. I know your mind's about to explode, but um, you won't get all of these questions on your test, but you will get probably this some is, of them. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Just challenging. All right. That's for sure. Good. So which of the following frequencies is equal to 28,400 kilohertz? Uh, B. Not B. E. A. A. Point four A is, in fact, the correct answer. We're going from kilohertz mm. to megahertz, mm. so we move over mm. by three, oh, put yeah. the decimal point there. <sighs> if a frequency readout shows a reading of 2425 megahertz, what frequency is that in gigahertz? B. C. See. So we're going again. We move over by three. I realized my laser pointer three. wasn't on before. All right. Yeah. See that one right there. Yeah. All right. And if you don't get this one, I'm going home. Oh wait, I am home. What is the unit of frequency? <laughs> Maybe <Yeah>. hertz. <laughs> think a think a Heinrich <laughs> indeed hertz. All right. And what do you think the abbreviation RF refers to? Radio frequency. Frequency A. Radio frequency signals of all types, all right? And here's that one. What is the proper abbreviation Ooh, for megahertz? That's e. E. Delta. That's, that's the trick one. That's the tricky one. Absolutely. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have completed section 2.1. I congratulate you, and we get to move on now to radio equipment basics. Who is that mask man? Oh, that would be me. And that's my ham shack, actually, from a few years ago. Um, but it's, it looks very much the same now. So that's a ham radio station. But in essence, it actually consists of just this. We have something that will transmit radio frequency signals. We have something that will receive radio frequency signals. We have a transmit and receive switch and a common antenna that is connected via a feed line. So this is what any ham radio station looks like. And back in the day, they actually used to sell separate transmitters and receivers that would you know, go along with this block diagram. These were the famous Kenwood twins coming from Japan, the radio receiver over here and the transmitter over here. Boy, when I was growing up in high school, I lusted after these, but couldn't afford them. They were very expensive. Nowadays, 
we use transceivers. And a transceiver is something that integrates both functions, that of radio reception and radio transmitting, into one box. So here we have at the center, we have a transceiver. Uh, a lot of transceivers um, can be operated mobile, uh, can be po uh, powered by a car battery. So a lot of transceivers are powered by 12 volts, or 13.8 volts actually. And so you might have a power supply to power the radio. You have various input devices to, to send modulation. So you have a Morse code key here, or you have a microphone here. And then you have uh, various output devices to be able to hear the signal. So you've got a speaker or maybe a, a set of headphones. Typical amateur radio transceivers will output 100 watts of radio frequency energy. And then if you want to go higher in power, you have to get something else called a radio frequency power amplifier, also known as a linear amplifier. And that then connects out to an antenna. So here is a kind of a modern uh, ham radio station. So how deep are your pocketbook, uh, is your pocketbook, I should say? If you want, you can go for this radio. This is the ICOM 7851. It'll set you back about $13,000. I don't have one <laughs> for obvious reasons. <laughs> but uh, very nice radio, beautiful radio. Um, so again, back to my ham shack. This is my um, station, and I'll tell you more about my station in, in upcoming classes. But this, too, is a ham radio station. Inside this little handy talkie, or walkie talkie, um, is a radio receiver, an FM radio receiver, uh, and an FM radio transmitter. Inside here is a transmit and receive switch that connects the antenna to either the receiver or to the transmitter um, and transmits out to maybe another radio. Now, the range of these radios on VHF and UHF, the maximum range you're going to get um, is probably only about two to three miles. Don't believe them when they say, hey, this is a 20 mile uh, radio. Uh, no. Um, the, just the, the mechanics of being six feet above the ground uh, with a handy talkie that you're holding, you know, uh, like here, uh, you're not going to go any farther unless you use one of these, which is a radio repeater. And uh, I think it was Jeff was asking me earlier uh, in the evening what uh, frequency to listen on in this area. Uh, and the Caesars had two meter repeaters on 146 0.61 megahertz. Uh, that's its output frequency. But what a radio repeater does is it actually has a radio receiver and then a, a transmitter. It listens on one frequency and transmits out on another frequency. And in so doing, it repeats the signal. That's a radio repeater. It re receives one channel and outputs on another channel. And how does it do that? Well, instead of that transmit receive switch that you saw on the other block diagram, it has something here in the middle called a duplexer. And the duplexer connects up to a common antenna. The problem with connecting a transmitter to the input of a receiver is you'll blow the receiver out immediately. A receiver is designed to receive very weak signals well, the transmitter is designed to output you know, many watts uh, of power, uh, so a radio receiver you know, won't you know, work that way. But a duplexer is a complex series of filters that filter the frequency range to be received from the frequency range that is going to be transmitted. So you have a transmitter, a receiver, and a duplexer. And this is what a radio repeater system looks like. It's this kind of equipment uh, in the rack over here. And this is the duplexer, also known as cavity wave filters. And it's this plumbing that actually keeps the radio receiver and the repeater from being damaged by its own radio transmitter. Oh, already some questions. You'll like these questions better. So what type of amateur station simultaneously retransmits the signal of another amateur station on a different channel or channels. 
C is a repeater station, what we just talked about. And what is a transceiver? B. A unit combining the functions of a transmitter and a receiver. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of Chapter 2. You made it. Congratulations. Matt, come on back to me if you would. And uh, any questions, uh, comments from anyone? Gary, will you be sending out the slides like you did last week? Indeed. Uh, what we will be doing is I'll uh, convert these over to a PDF form. Uh, and I will be uh, sending them out to you. I'll also be sending out a second PDF something we call the Right Answers Study Guide, uh, which is consists of just the questions and just the right answer. So that might help you uh, as you study up. Anything else? Thank you. All right, guys. So I did have a quick question. Yes, ma'am. Um, because we have the transmit receive switch, that makes full duplex communications impossible. And if I'm jumping ahead to a later chapter, please say, yes, we're going to cover that later. Um, is there any technology, is there any way to easily say, hey, I'm going to transmit on X, receive on Y, and you achieve full duplex communication in that respect? Um, so most amateur radio, so what we're talking about here is, and let, um, we'll cover it in a, in a future chapter, but this is fine, duplex communication. Think of a landline telephone, you're on the telephone, you're talking to somebody and you're telling them a story and they go, wait, 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 no, that can't be true. They can break in on you. You're sending your voice and then you're also able to receive their voice at the exact same time. That's duplex communication. In amateur radio, primarily, we don't have that. Rather, we have... Um, push to talk where you can transmit and then you have to release and then you can receive and so we'll talk about that in some bands uh, you can set up modes of full duplex communication but usually UHF and above uh, but by and large most amateur radio communication is um, one person at a time thank you Jeff great yeah. I'm sorry, well, yeah, I was trying to write down your email address and so would you get that? Sure, uh, so the email address uh, to get the what I call the color chart uh, is my call sign, W4EEY, Whiskey4, uh -huh. Echo, Echo, Yankee, at ARRL dot NET, or Alpha Romeo Romeo Lima dot November Echo Tango. And we'll be learning the phonetic alphabet in an upcoming chapter as well. Yeah, I got it. Now. Just drop you an email and say send me the chart. Yeah, and make sure you give me your address. Uh, I, I may have it in the records, but it'd be easier if you just put it, your address in the email and then I can just uh, uh, address the envelope. Anything else? Okay. No, that was great. Thank you. Thank you all for participating. Uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate those who are watching on YouTube. Uh, and we'll be back with uh, Chapter 3 next week. 73. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 73. You. 73. 73. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Fade to black. Yeah, Mom. <laughs>